Today's episode that we're going to be doing is uh, showing you how to set up the perfect home bar for entertaining. A home bar takes a lot more thought and planning than most people would imagine and so we're going to go step by step through teaching you some of the processes that I go through when I'm setting up a bar and talking about some unique drinks that you can make but also how to make your bar unique and how to make it look beautiful. I wanted to start by showing you some of the pre-preparation that takes place uh, when I go ahead and set up a bar for a party that we're having. Um, I don't tend to just uh, throw a bar together. I like to plan it out and lay out all of my supplies, my drinks, my beverages, uh, the mixers, the containers that I'm gonna put everything into and uh, sort of lay it out so that I can see it and then start to build the bar from there. So we've got some of our uh, pitchers and water bottles set up here because when I do my bar, I don't like to have a lot of bottles with labels on it. I like to decant everything so that it looks really beautiful. Um, we've got some cake pedestals that gives a little bit of uh, riser and height to some things that, so that everything is not on one level on your bar. So you're gonna create different levels to put different things on. Um, I've got some of our condiments and some spiced nuts some of our sodas and mixtures, uh, and I'm gonna show you how we arrange all of that on the bar. And then over here we have some of our other props that we're gonna use. Again, I like to lay out all of my props and be thoughtful uh, about how I'm going to use these pieces. Um, we've got some small things that are gonna hold lemons, limes, cocktail onions, olives, and things like that. And I've got some uh, tray type of things that we are actually gonna put our alcohol and our sodas in. When I'm making a bar, I like to have everything set and contained within the bar because it keeps the bar looking clean and fresh and it's easy to clean up around uh, as your guests are pouring drinks and things can get a little bit messy. So this makes it very easy and functional to keep your bar always looking good throughout the night. We usually set our bar up in our butler's pantry here uh, if you have a space like this, it's a great place to do a bar, especially if uh, you are near a bar sink, which is very helpful to have. If you are setting up a bar just on a table or maybe on a buffet table uh, or a bookcase or something, you can still do the same type of a setup with that as well. Um, but the first thing that I like to start with is getting out my glassware. Because I always like things contained, I have put down uh, a tray that I'm gonna keep all of my glassware organized on. And so we're gonna pick out a few different styles and shapes of glassware to make the bar look interesting. And I like to use versatile glassware that can be used for either wine, soda, or beer. So again, different shapes, different cut glassware, These are a beautiful feather cut glassware. Again, really nice for almost any kind of a drink. We've also got some small martini glasses in case somebody wants a martini. I like to try to use even number of glasses that match in quantity. We're also gonna need some champagne flutes if anybody wants some sparkling wine, Prosecco or champagne. And we are also gonna need some uh, rocks glasses. These are old fashioned glasses, which work well if somebody wants a scotch or a bourbon. I like to stay fairly classical with the types of alcohol that I have on a bar. When I'm entertaining, I don't like to get too crazy with drinks, uh, with tequila and all of that. So I like to keep very classical type of liquors on a bar. So you'll notice how beautifully the glassware is all lined up in varying heights, keeping the shorter ones towards the front here. 
And I also want to point out that I put an antique mirror behind this, which gives a really beautiful reflection in the bar. So think about what people are going to see when they're coming into your house and helping themselves at your bar. Try to make it unique and creative and, and really beautiful. So think of different elements that you can put on the bar to draw people over to make themselves a drink. So because our bar has a TV that hangs on it, uh, I like to illuminate the TV rather than just having it be a blank space. And I have found that if you go to YouTube, uh, they have certain screens that you can put up on the TV that will give you some type of a scenery on it. And so because we're in Florida, we're going to put on a beach scene and just make sure that the volume is set to zero. So that's just going to play on rotation. I think it's about a three hour rotation that it'll play on. So it just gives a visual interest at the bar if your bar area does have a TV there. The next thing I like to start with is lining up my liquors and my beer and my wine and getting all of that set. And so I have picked out this huge champagne bowl which is going to get ice in it and it's going to hold um, our sparkling wine and our white wine and our sparkling soda in it. Because it's got some height, I want to place it to the back so that I can utilize the front area to put some smaller things. In our big tub, we're going to do our white wine and our iced rosé sparkling wine. And we're also going to set our red wine up in the same area so that your wine is kept all together. A lot of you could be wondering, you know, how do I decide how much wine to, to buy for a party? There's sort of a rule of thumb in that you generally are going to buy more red wine than you are white wine. And you're probably going to have two thirds of your crowd are going to be red wine drinkers and only one third is going to be white wine drinkers. And even less is going to be sparkling wine. I always like to offer a sparkling wine or a champagne uh, when we entertain. I think it's a, a really nice beverage to offer for somebody that a lot of people don't usually find when they go to a house party. And so usually about 15 to 20 minutes before the party starts, I will put the cold wine and champagne in my bucket and just throw a little bit of ice on it. This does not need to be packed full of ice. What you don't want is a big bowl of water once it melts. So just a little bit of ice to keep it chilled. It's also going to make uh, the metal of the bowl cold and you're not going to have to contend with a, a big bowl of water once it all melts. So in figuring out how many bottles of wine you should purchase, um, you can figure for about five to six glasses of wine per bottle and people are going to drink about one and a half glasses of wine per hour. So depending on how many hours your party is, uh, you're going to calculate that out. It's better to have some left over that you can use either for another party or drink yourself than to run out. Of course, other people, not everybody's going to drink wine. Other people are going to have mixed drinks and beer. Um, but it's a little bit better to overestimate than to underestimate. I always like to serve uh, a very dry white wine. I do not like sweet white wines. I feel that the sweetness in many of the white wines disrupts the food. So um, I love to choose a Vouvray or some type of a French white wine uh, that is very dry and very crisp on the palate. I also like to serve a very hearty red wine. So I like wines that have a lot of body that have a very long finish to them. And usually a blended wine is best to serve because it is more well-rounded than a single blend. You can try out wines and, and test what your favorite is. Adding the liquor to the bar. Again, I like to keep it contained in some type of a container so that as people use it, they know to put it back and your bar stays nice and clean. I like to keep it spaced out so that you can see the labels of the alcohol that you have. Another really nice thing to do is if, you've, if you're going to have whiskey or bourbon, um, decant it. This looks really great and you see a lot less labels on the bar. The alcohol that I like to use on a bar is uh, a vodka, really good quality vodka, gin, a bourbon, 
a scotch. Uh, rum, I could take or leave, but we had some rum, so we'll put some rum on it. Some vermouth, which can be used for uh, making martinis, and also some sweetened roses lime juice. So on our cutting board here, we are going to put uh, the juices for our bar, and I will explain to you how I do that. I do not like labels from juice containers. So I like to decant my juices into beautiful bottles or pitchers, um, which really just make the bar look nice and elegant. Again, very clean. You don't have a lot of visual display. So the labels that you're really able to see are from the wines and the liquors. And the three types of juices that I like to put on a bar is orange juice, pineapple juice, and cranberry juice. It's important to note that when you're uh, buying juice for your bar, make sure you're buying 100% juice in the bottle. Most juices like cranberry juice or pineapple juice will come with a very low percentage of juice. So it's mostly sugar uh, and other things added to it. You don't want to add a lot of that sweetness into your drinks. You can offer a little side of simple syrup if somebody needs a little bit more sweetness to their drink. And the other drink that I love to serve at a party because it's not very difficult to make and I think a lot of people appreciate it but you don't see a lot of people doing it is a homemade Bloody Mary. I like to make my own Bloody Mary mix and we're actually going to share the recipe, my personal recipe with you. And another juice that I love to add to the bar is just Palm's pomegranate juice. A lot of people don't think to use this in their cocktails, but a few drops of this in a glass of champagne uh, is really wonderful. So garnishes are also very important for your bar. Lemons, limes, lemon and lime zest. Pomegranate seeds makes a really beautiful addition to your bar. And of course, your other garnish is also very important. We've got olives that are stuffed with blue cheese. It's very important when you put olives on a bar that you do not get olives that are packed in oil. You want to buy olives that are packed in water. You do not want to add that oil to your cocktail when it's made. We have cocktail onions and we also have some celery stalks for our Bloody Mary mix. The one thing that I rarely ever use on a bar is maraschino cherries. Uh, I don't think anybody ever uses them. They always get wasted, so I never buy them. And of course, if you're making a martini, you're going to need a pick to put your olive or your onion in. So we have these beautiful glass picks that we have our guests use. You can use toothpicks, you can use uh, frilly toothpicks, you can get bamboo ones that are tied into knots. These make the perfect little pick for a martini. Don't forget to add in your sodas. So obviously Coke and Diet Coke are on a bar, Sprite. Something that a lot of people don't ever put on a bar anymore is ginger ale. I always like to add it because it, some, some people may want to do a little bit of ginger ale in their bourbon or scotch. You've got uh, tonic water on a bar, always some club soda on a bar, and we've got some ginger beer. I like to have ginger beer on the bar uh, because we do have bourbon and some people may like to make a Moscow Mule uh, for a cocktail. Another thing to note when I do my bar, I don't like big bottles of soda on it. Uh, I just, I don't like the way that looks, so I prefer to use uh, sodas in cans. It also helps when you're cleaning up from a party um, that the cans can actually be crushed and put into the recycle bin versus having thousands of bottles around the house. A bowl of ice is always important on the bar, of course, um, and I usually like to keep this in the sink because the, the bowl of ice really becomes the messy part on a bar. It gets wet around it, people drop the ice. So I, if you do have a sink nearby, consider keeping your bowl of ice right in the sink so that if it does get messy, it's going in the sink, it's easy to clean up. 
and it can be easily be refilled. And if you do need to use the sink, it's very easy just to lift the bowl out and place it somewhere else, use the sink and replace it. And lastly for your bar, don't forget about your utensils. You've got to have uh, a shot glass, have a couple of wine openers. I like these captain's knives. Uh, they both can open up beer bottles and they can open up wine bottles. Um, they're very discreet. They're very clean looking. I think a lot of people get confused when they have to use those rabbit ears and everything else. So keep these. They're, they can just tuck away in a nice little glass container. You always want to have some cocktail napkins on hand. And the one thing that I think a lot of people forget on a bar is uh, some bar cloths. Things always happen at a bar and you need something at the ready in order to grab if somebody spills something or makes a mess on the counter. So I always like to leave these tucked towards the back of the bar, behind the sink, or somewhere a little bit more discreet. So it's not out in the open, but it is right there if somebody does need one. And last but not least, have a cocktail shaker. If you're gonna serve martinis, you've gotta have a good shaker for them to be made in. So the other thing I like to add to a bar are some homemade spiced nuts. These are cumin spiced cashews. I make them homemade and I'm gonna be supplying you guys with the recipe for those. They're a wonderful addition to a bar. Little bit of saltiness and sweet with a little bit of spice from the cumin and some cayenne pepper. But I love to put nuts, or you could even use breadsticks, um, or even a even a bowl of potato chips at a bar. Um, just gives your guests a little bit of a nosh while they're making a drink, contemplating uh, what they would like to have. So my favorite drink is usually a vodka gimlet, but during quarantine, I came up with a new variation of it, which is called the Quarantini, which is a vodka gimlet with a little bit of pineapple juice, and a splash of palms. Mmm, that is delicious. So when you're entertaining, as I said, the first thing your guests are welcome to is the bar. And if you have the ability to do it, uh, try to make the first drink for your guest for them. Show them where the bar is, offer to make them a drink, uh, don't just leave them all alone to wonder what to do and where to find things and how to do it. Uh, give them a little bit of guidance, but also welcome them to a beautiful bar and have a great party.